1963, the Reverend John Smallwood was appointed as Vicar of Holy Trinity in the parish of Orbiston Parva, a prosperous neighbourhood ruled by the Despard family, makers of Tranquilax, the three-in-one restorative, which advertised itself as sedative, stimulant, laxative. They made it in the factory, which was just down the road, out of sight of their beautiful home. Arriving at the vicarage, Mr Smallwood wastes no time in meeting the parishioners to discuss their spiritual lives, quickly finding that, in his judgment at least, they don't have any. His first sermon is very direct and to the point, observing, This town is full of people who call themselves Christian, but from what I've seen of it, I wouldn't mind taking a bet that there aren't enough real Christians to feed one decent lion. Meanwhile, a traveller's camp establishes itself just outside of the windows of the Tranquilax offices, causing some consternation there. So the new vicar invites them to come up higher and set up camp in the churchyard. The established congregation are becoming more and more agitated, and before long, he appoints as vicar's warden Matthew, an immigrant from the Caribbean, full of Christian fervour and given joyfully to singing hymns as he worked. Rather surprisingly, and to the horror of her neighbours and family, the vicar soon finds an unlikely convert in the shape of Lady Despard. For the first time in her life, she sees the light of mercy and charity and helps to establish a food bank in the church. The snide criticisms go on, from the bishop who complains that Smallwood keeps bringing God into everything, to two women arguing over which of them is a more worthy beneficiary of the food bank, and who tell Matthew the church warden, you don't belong here, as they stand beneath a banner that invites its readers to love one another. The Reverend Mr Smallwood is a man of good works and doctrinal zeal. His scorn for Tranquilax, it seems, is largely due to its advertising itself as the three-in-one restorative. For Smallwood, the only three-in-one restorative is the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. It all seems very contemporary, doesn't it? And just in case you are trying to figure out who those people are and where is the parish of Orbiston Parva, I can tell you that, among others, Peter Sellers, Brock Peters, Irene Handel and Eric Sykes played the residents of that place in the 1963 film Heavens Above. Well, Smallwood, however, humorously, seems to have found the heart of the Trinity Sunday message. Preachers tie themselves in knots, trying to explain what it means to be three in one and one in three, as if resolving some complex mathematical equation. We come up with, or rather more accurately, recycle images to illustrate the point. So ice, water and steam are all different to see or touch, but all consist of the same molecules. A woman who is mother to her children, wife to her husband, and daughter to her parents is still one person. A musical chord of three notes, in which each works together to make one melodious sound, while remaining separate and discrete notes. All of them fair enough illustrations, as far as they go. However, that which we really know about God is not what we have been clever enough to work out, but what God has chosen to reveal. And the reason why our definitions are important is that we must safeguard what God has revealed. We are stewards of the mysteries of God, and we are to be faithful stewards. The Trinity speaks of the gift of God, the gift of life, 
There is no inequality in God, whose three persons are equal but different. Seeing life as a gift from God, celebrating on Trinity Sunday who God actually is, is celebrating who we are. And that doesn't mean me, myself and I, for God models relationship, and in relationship each must enable each other to to flourish and be fully alive. And today, as we grieve over the shocking murder of George Floyd and over a world in which such such a brazenly racist act can still take place, we must all weep over it as Jesus wept over Jerusalem and be angry over it as Jesus was when he overturned the tables of the traders in the temple. We must not be afraid to proclaim that black lives matter. We must not be afraid to proclaim that there is no place among those who worship the loving, living God, who reveals himself as Father, Son and Holy Spirit, for any form of discrimination. As our Archbishop said last week, Recent events in the United States of America have once again drawn public attention to the ongoing evil of white supremacy. Systemic racism continues to cause incalculable harm across the world. Our hearts weep for the suffering caused, for those who have lost their lives, those who have experienced persecution, those who live in fear. God's justice and love for all creation demands that this evil is properly confronted and tackled. Let us be clear, racism is an affront to God. It is born out of ignorance and it must be eradicated. We all bear the responsibility and must play our part to eliminate this scourge on humanity. As Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, in a real sense, we are all caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Therefore, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. The Archbishops concluded, we pray that God's abounding wisdom, compassion and love will guide leaders across the world to forge a better society. Now, as much as ever, the Trinity matters, not because we need to examine it under a microscope and define it, but because it is the community of love in which we came to birth. It is the community of love in which we live out our days and because it is the community of love in which we will find our lasting home when God's kingdom comes. The Trinity, the original and originating community of love, therefore must lead us to create our own communities of love, now until the arrival of God's ultimate kingdom. And these are to be communities in which there is no space for hatred, prejudice or discrimination on any grounds. May we live each day in the power of that love which drives out all fear and who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen.